we are on this Unit 5 Supplemental Notes page, and this is just to kind of rehash out what we did yesterday. So first, we are trying to solve polynomials, find the x-intercepts and the solutions. So the first thing that I always check for is the degree, because the degree tells you the number of roots that you are going to find. So applying that to example one, our degree is three. So we should have three roots. Now, step number two says try to factor, or you can start by looking directly at the graph. Folks, let's try to factor this. Is there a GCF or something we can take out of everybody? Uh, no. But there are four terms. And what's that way of factoring that we try to use with four terms? Grouping. So split it in half. Take an x squared out from here, which leaves me with x plus 2. And then we take a 9 out, which leaves me with x plus 2. So uh, this is equal to 0. We take a GCF of x plus 2 out, and we are left with the x squared plus 9. So do I need to look at my calculator graph to figure out stuff about the roots? Not for this one, because we were able to factor it. I don't have to do any of that P over Q value stuff. But I can still look at my calculator to check myself. So let's go ahead and solve this, and then we will see how using our calculator as a check is useful. So first, now that I have something times something equals 0, we're going to set these equal to 0. So either x plus 2 equals 0, or x squared plus 9 equals 0. So x equals negative 2, x squared equals negative 9. How do I solve for x? Square root, square root. So x equals, what comes first after the equals? Plus or minus. Plus or minus. So we have two possible solutions. How does that negative come out of the square root? I. As an i. And what about the square root of 9? 3 i. 3. So 3 i. I. So, how many total solutions did we find? X equals negative 2 is 1. X equals positive 3i is 2. And X equals negative 3i is 3. So, we have successfully found all three solutions. Now, I want you to draw a little line. And let's say that we weren't sure if we could factor this. So option two. Let's say we weren't able to factor this and we say, you know what? Can't factor it. I'm going to just look at the graph and see what that tells me. Go to your y equals, clear out any stuff that's in there, and we're going to type in that equation. x cubed plus 2x squared plus 9 x. You have to know how to work a calculator for this test, folks. It's really, really important because these problems especially, you're going to have to know how to get your graph and how to read your graph. So, folks, there's our graph. So, option two, we look at the count graph. And what we see is negative two. There's my line going through it. Whoop, whoop. I missed it. And so there, a big dot there. So it's going up like this. So x equals negative 2. So that I can tell directly from my graph. The problem is we need to find those other two roots. So once we find x-intercepts, this is up at step three, we put them in the synthetic division box to break down the polynomial. Now we started getting into kind of the conceptual side of this yesterday. If x equals negative two is a root, then what's the factor that gives me that root? x plus two. So if I want to divide this polynomial by a known factor, which is x plus 2 a factor from what we did above, 
Yeah, so we definitely know that's a factor. If I want to divide by this factor, what goes in the box? Negative 2. So when you're dividing by a factor, you flip the sign. I think it's easier on these solving problems to just say, if I find a root, I'm putting it in the box. So conceptually, you are dividing by the factor, but it's a little bit easier just to say, if I find an x-intercept, I can put it in the box and break down the polynomial. And the whole point of breaking down the polynomial is we'd like to be able to get it to degree 2. What's special about degree 2 polynomials? Quadratic. They're quadratics. And what do we love about quadratics? Factoring, quadratic formula, square root, square root. We are most comfortable with quadratics. So if we can depress the polynomial or break it down to be a quadratic, we have lots of options for solving. So we're going to put negative 2 in the box. So listing out my coefficients, making sure I'm checking for any power placeholders. 3, 2, 1, constant, no placeholders necessary. 1, 2, 9, 18. And folks, when I'm dividing by a factor or putting the root in the box, what should my remainder be? Zero. If it's not zero, you goofed. Now, my starting degree polynomial was 3, so what is the degree of my new polynomial? It's 2. Ding, ding, ding. Quadratic. We love it. So now I have x squared plus 0x. What's 0x? Nothing. 0. We don't have to write it. So I get x squared plus 9, and now I need to solve this remaining factor. So I divide by a factor, and I get x squared plus 9. Check it out, check it out. We divide by a factor, and we get another factor. There's x squared plus 9, just like we got above. So now, can I solve x squared plus 9 to get my other solutions? Yep. Subtract the 9. Square root, square root. And once again, x equals plus or minus 3i. You have to do that last place. Do we what? All right, so folks, why am I showing this to you? Option one, factoring. We'll go ahead and write that. So option one was to factor. If I don't feel like factoring, I can do option two. The issue with this is sometimes option one is unavailable because we can't factor it using our normal factoring methods like grouping or GCF. So option one, if possible, option two, worst case scenario. But as you can see, we get the same answer. And I just wanted to kind of compare and contrast these to show you why we're putting it in the box and how that factor matches this. And this answer we get when we synthetically divide matches the other factor. Does that make more sense as far as what the parts of synthetic division are in these problems? It makes a lot more sense. A little bit more sense. We're still going to do a lot more examples with this. So we are now going to look at example two. So option one, factor. Why not? There's freaking five terms. Can we split it in half and group? No. no. Uh, well, can we take out a GCF, though, from all of them? Yeah. No. no. We're doing this one up here, one down there we can. But nope, no GCF. So option one factor, we can't do it. So that leaves us with option two of using the Kelt graph. So let's type this sucker in, and let's see if we can figure out any of the x-intercepts based on what the graph shows me. So y equals 5x to the fourth minus 8x cubed plus 41x squared minus 72x. And 
And folks, I did that quite fast because I'm pretty fast on the calculator. You do not want to type in those equations too quickly, though, because a mistake on the graph means the whole problem is going to have issues. So it's very important that you check and make sure that all of your powers are correct and um, all of your numbers and signs are correct as well. And that's why, folks, if you're using option two, I recommend that you draw out the calc graph. That way on your test, I can say, hey, your graph was all weird. So that probably means you typed in the equation wrong. And that way I might be able to give you a bit more partial credit there. So let's go ahead and just draw a happy little sketch of our graph. So it looks like we've got one x-intercept here-ish and another x-intercept here-ish. Hmm. Your graph is weird. Yeah, and folks using the classroom set of calculators, sometimes the pre-calc could do weird stuff with them. All right, folks, so looking at this graph, does it look like we know any of the x-intercepts exactly? Ooh, and actually, our degree is 4, so that means 4 roots. So how many roots do we see? We see 2. What does that tell me about the other 2? They're imaginary. Close to me. Imaginary. So... This one looks like it's right at two. How do we test to make sure it's right? trace? So trace, type two, hit enter. Yep, that's definitely an x-intercept. But what about this one? Mine says negative two. I press trace and it's not on. Spell the date up wrong. You don't look like Now what about that other one? Trace two and it's only negative two. Whoa. Yep. All right, folks, so we know this one exactly. X equals 2 is definitely a root. So 2 is a root. What are we going to do with it? Put it in the box. So put it in the box to depress the polynomial or break it down into something smaller. So if we are dividing this, the factor would be x minus 2, and it's the factor sign that flips. The root sign remains. Root sign stays the same. So 5, negative 8. And that's a good thing to keep in mind, folks, because if you do goof and put negative 2 in the box, you won't get a remainder of 0. So that should be your red flag of maybe I shouldn't switch the sign. 5. 10, 2, 4, 45, 90, 18, 36. Woo! How would you do it so fast? It's in the math. This is true. Wait, how did you get 5? Oh, I, I forgot the name. Definitely also doing the math, not just. All right, folks, so what's our new degree? Uh, three. Three. Now, let's go ahead and just look at this degree three polynomial. 5x cubed plus 2x squared, 45x plus 18. So I couldn't factor the original polynomial, but by breaking it down, is this something I can factor? Yeah. Absolutely. We can try at least. Grouping. Split it in half. G 
GCF of x squared? Wait, does that have to follow over? No, because we need to find three more roots. So x plus 2, and 9. No, 5x. Oh, 5x, yes, thank you, 5x. That's close, we almost didn't have a match. Bless you. So 5x plus 2. You mean what if we can't factor it? That's when P over Q values come into play. So we're going to run it through with factoring first, and then we'll show how the P over Q values work. So can I get my other three roots from this? Yeah. Yep. I got something times something equals zero. So set each of those equal to zero. So 5x plus 2. Zero. See if you can solve for x. Hmm? What? The grouping? Um, also, it's supposed to start raining, I think, before or after school. If anyone's walking home, I do have spare umbrellas in the cupboard if anybody needs it. Okay, it's not sweet. Because I know you guys are too cool to carry umbrellas. <laughs> And that's a good way to ruin your computers. Actually, folks, when you, um, if you are walking to your car and it's raining, put your computer and calculator in like the innermost part of your backpack because um, I have had people put it in like the front pocket and calculators do get water damaged. Like these LED ones, I've seen them get ruined because of rain before. So protect your stuff. Make a, make a run for it. Or if you want to leave your calculator uh, charging in my dock overnight, you are welcome to do that. We can use a Sharpie to put your name on it. All right, folks, so what are we getting for one of the X-intercepts? What? <laughs> Come again? X equals negative two fifths. And then move that nine over. Squared equals negative nine. Square root, square root. X equals plus or minus three I. Why three I? Because we're square rooting a negative and because nine is a perfect square. The square root of nine is three. So folks, how many roots did we find? Three. Total. Four. We've got one, two. Those are the real ones. And then the two imaginary ones. And folks, this is important. Let's go ahead and trace negative two divided by five. Boom. We get zero. It is an x-intercept. So your calculator graph is key for checking those real solutions. How are we doing with that? Now, Duke asked a good question because he's like, what happens if this doesn't work? What happens if I have a d degree 3 and we can't factor? Oh, okay. This marker does not work. Can't factor. Because if I can't factor that, can I use the quadratic formula on a degree three polynomial? No. And if I can't factor, it's like, how are we going to get those solutions? If you can't factor, that's when you do the P over Q values. So, folks, we don't have to do that on this one, but I want to show you how it works so we can hit P over Q values again because it's just like, oh, all these numbers, all these plus or minuses. What does it actually mean? So, if I can't factor this, we say, hey, this x-intercept that is between 0 and 1, 0 and negative 1, sorry, if it's rational, it has to come from the P over Q values. So my P values would come from this 18. 
and my Q values would come from the 5. So we list all, which would be plus or minus 1, 2, 3, 4, no, 5, no, 6, 9, and 18. Of 18. So if we couldn't factor this degree 3 polynomial, we would do P over Q value for it. What is 18? And P is the What's Q? last number. And P, is P is your constant, the last number. Q is your leading coefficient. So Q values would be 1 and 5. So those are the P values and the Q values. But the values that we actually care about are the P over Q values. So we're going to take every P value divided by every Q value. And folks, those plus or minuses are vital. I'm going to be looking for those on the test. So I'm going to take each of these values divided by 1. So 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 18. Sweet. Then I'm going to take each of those values divided by 5. 1 fifth. 2 fifths. 3 fifths. 6 fifths. 9 fifths. Yuck. And 18 fifths. So what these values say is if that negative two-fifths that we were trying to find is rational, it has to come from that set of numbers. So, folks, we're going to pretend like all we know is that x is between 0 and negative 1. So, I couldn't factor. We're going to pretend, and I'm trying to find that x-intercept. How many fractions are between 0 and negative 1? An infinite amount. So we have just taken an infinite amount of fractions and narrowed it down to this set of numbers. So is that root positive or negative? Negative. negative. So that cancels out the positive as a possibility. Is it going to be one of these whole numbers, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 6, negative 9, or negative 18? No, because we clearly see that it's not on the money, not on a tick mark. So then we want to start looking at these fractions. Which of these fractions are between 0 and negative 1? The first three. Because this would be, this would be negative 1 and 1 fifth. This would be negative 1 and 4 fifths. So these are the only ones that are less than 1 that are in that tick mark range. So, folks, if I needed to figure out this root, I can hit trace to test these. So I want you to write trace to test viable options. The only ones that you can test all of them if you want, but we want to try negative 1 fifth. Is that the x-intercept? No. Negative two fifths. There it is. So, folks, now we have found that root. So, that's where we go to next. So, as you can see, factoring is the better option, right? We only want to do this if we are desperate. Similar to how in unit four, it's like if you can factor, don't use the quadratic formula. But sometimes you have no choice, and the quadratic formula is the only way to find your solutions. So, folks, we've got the negative two-fifths now that we could have gotten from factoring. But how are we going to use this to find the imaginary solutions? Once we find an x-intercept, put it in the box. So negative two-fifths in the box. And now I'm going to take that cubic function, that degree 3, and do 5, 2, 45, and 18. So these numbers are coming from that equation. Yeah? So 
So if you're a little bit nervous about having a fraction in the box, remember, our remainder is going to be zero. Folks, what's negative 2 fifths times 5? The divided by 5 and the 5 cancel, and you are left with negative 2. Add straight down, 0. 0 times the box is 0. Add straight down is 45. 45 times the box, the 5 cancels with the 45, leaving us with 9 times negative 2 is negative 18. If you go, ha, 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 no, Mrs. Cairo, can you type that in on your calculator yeah. to do that fraction multiplication? Absolutely. Folks, next unit, we start hitting it very hard with the fractions and all these things that you can check yourself on your calculator. We're going to start working on those basic fraction skills again. So, folks, what's the degree of our new polynomial? What? Our degree goes down to 2. So now it's a quadratic. 5x squared plus 45 equals 0. Can I solve that? For x. Do we have to use the quadratic formula? No. Easy x. What do you want to do? Easy x. Huh? Minus the 45. No. Divide by 5. No. x squared equals negative 9. Square root, square root. And x is plus or minus 3i. Did we get the same answers that we did above? Yes. I have a question. Yeah, what's your question? How did you get like 18? Like just like um, numbers do. These two? Yeah. So p values always come from factors of your constant term. Oh. And then q values, factors of your leading coefficient. Okay. So that's where those numbers came from, and we just listed out all the possibilities. So folks. What's the takeaway from this? We should always try to factor first. But if you get stuck and can't find a fractional rational root, that's what P over Q values are for. I told the pre-cal kids that you guys were doing P over Q values. They're like, I bet they hate that. I'm like, you are 100% right. I promise that those of you going on to take pre calc it does seem easier the second time around. Trig is going to be a higher up activity for your brain and the rest of this term. Like, you will be surprised how going back to this stuff a year from now changes it for you and how it will seem easier. Hmm. What is P Prep for calculus. What is it? Limits to algebra geometry, two different things. What's calc Calc is more complicated graph stuff. Is that required to count? No. No, but you guys are done with your math credits after Algebra 2. Are you, how many pre-calc teachers are there? Two here, me and Celie. So we have a chance to do it with you or Tim. Tim, yes. How many calc teachers? I'm the only calc teacher in the spring, so. I mean, you do AP calc? Or only pre-calc teacher. No, I don't do AP calc. Felt does calc. Who does? Felt, next door. And he does AP pre-calc as well? Come on, Drew. Uh, Celi and Felt, I think, both do Calc 1, but I think Felt's the only Calc 1 teacher right now, and then Celi does Calc 2 as well. Folks, what time is lunch? What time is it? We got 10 I assume we take a 15 minute mental break. Um, I want to start this next problem. Can we do it by ourselves? No. 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 Like I mean... Let's just start with the basics. We look at this problem and we say degree is 4. How many roots are we looking for? 4 roots. What can we factor, folks? An x out. It seems insignificant, but it still is a start. So x equals 0 is our first root. Because if I have something times a big something equals 0, that little something, the little x, has to be equal to 0. Now, we look at what's left in parentheses. I factor that further. 
We, we can try. So there's four terms, so we can try to group it. So let's see, x squared, 5x minus 29. Ooh, is there anything I can take out of 55 and 28? Uh, I mean, I guess we could take one out, but that's just going to leave me with 55x minus 28. And when those two things are not the same, when we can't take out the full GCF, yeah, we can't factor it. But that doesn't mean there are no solutions. It doesn't even necessarily mean that it's prime. It just means our normal factoring strategies are not going to work here. So before we go, oh, no, P over Q, before we do that, we are going to look at the graph and just see what we're working with here because maybe we'll be able to find something on the graph. So clear out your equation. So graph next. So try to factor, look at the graph. And folks, we're going to go back to the original equation. Five, x to the fourth. I'm seeing my x-intercept of zero. That's a good thing. How many other x-intercepts do I have? One. So there's two real ones. What does that tell me about the other two? They are imaginary. Imaginary. Hmm? Point eight. What? Type in the trace point eight. What did you just start guessing? <laughs> you guys are killing me. <laughs> so yeah, I mean <laughs> you could start plugging in randoms, but what about one over thirteen? What about 1 over 21? Maybe I'm just going to change the test for you guys. <laughs> just those two. All right, folks, so the graph. <laughs> oh, that's a terrible sketch that I just did. So, folks, big thing is... We've got one x-intercept at zero, which we can see directly, and we could also tell from, you know, using our greatest common factor. And then we've got one between zero and one. If that is rational, it's going to have to come from the p over q values. So we're going to use the p over q values of this unfactorable nonsense, this business right here. This is our new green. So P values, Q values. So folks, I'm going to turn you loose on this part. See if you can list the P over Q values. Wait, which, which, which um, problem do we use? Is the original one? Or the... the point where we get stuck. The point where we can't factor it. That's the equation we use. Good question. So find the p values, the q values, then the p over q values. Is it from like the top equation? Yes. If it's negative, do you include negative numbers? So that's a good question. So the p-value is negative. Folks, this is why we have the plus or minus in front. It accounts for the positive and negative factors of all of those. So check yourself because that little detail, importante. If you are struggling with finding all the P over Q values, folks, I just start dividing by integers. So if I want to find all the factors of 28, can I divide it by 1? Yeah. 2? Yeah. 3? No. 4? Yeah. 5? No. 6? No. 7? Yeah. And if you're like, how am I supposed to know yes or no? 
You can try it on your calculator. If you're not so great with factor trees, you can use your calculator to check yourself. But also notice you should have factor pairs. 4 times 7 is 28. 2 times 14 is 28. And 1 and 28 is 28. Sometimes students forget the number itself or they forget 1, so we're to the wise. So then our P over Q values. Take all those P values and divide it by 1. So all those numbers again. And then we take all those numbers divided by 5, and we get a whole mess of fractions. One-fifth, two-fifths, red fish, blue fish. Oh, I see what you did there. Thank you. So maybe check how you have it typed in on your calculator. So folks, when we go to narrow this down, is it going to be a positive or a negative? It's going to be a positive. It's between 0 and 1, so positive, so forget the negatives. Um, all those whole numbers, no, it's not going to work. So we only want fractions between 0 and 1, which is going to be the first three again. So test with trace. 1 divided by 5. Nope, that's not the x-intercept. 2 divided by 5. Nope. 4 divided by 5. Bam. There it is. What? From the very beginning, couldn't you just do like every single number divided by 5? Because that's the, that would be the q value, and you eventually just find it. Yeah, you can do it that way. I mean, that's what p over q values are. But like, you wouldn't have to do anything else. Could you can if you want. That'd be easy. But then you're still going to have to depress the polynomial to find the imaginary ones. So P over Q values, folks, that is going to find any rational roots. But how many roots does this have? Four. Four. So how are we going to find the other ones? We got to do synthetic division. So we're going to put zero in the box first. Because we took out a GCF, zero prop prop. Wait, how come? We're what, okay, what if you don't? We're gonna do four fifths too. Oh, you have to do both. Yep, we're gonna have to do both. So we put zero in the box. Um, you can use your guided practice back, the blue packet. Oh, you're so smart. Literally. We're gonna do something else there too. So. Actually, folks, we don't need to do the zero. Forget it. Yeah. Because we are going to depress that cube one. Just kidding. Never mind. Wait, what? Yeah, so we already factored. We already depressed the polynomial by dividing it by this to get this. So we can go ahead and depress that degree three. We're not gonna need to do zero because we already divided this by that factor to depress the polynomial down to a degree three. So now that we've got this degree three, we're gonna use four fifths to take it down to a degree two. Folks, I'm gonna turn you loose. Synthetically divide, get that remainder of zero, experiment with multiplying fractions. Four fifths of five is four. Four fifths is four. Five times like everybody. Yeah. 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 Yeah
What's the degree of our new polynomial? Huh? The degree. Two. One. Two. Two. Can we square root square root to solve this? Why not? Yeah, there's this x. So we can't isolate the x squared because there's that x there with it. Can we factor it? Yeah, we can do that once it's cross thing. Right? Let's not do the cross thing yet. Can we do something else to factor it? GCF. So take out a 5. Oh, I need to separate this problem. We take a 5 out. We get x squared minus 5x. So, folks, let's talk about this for a moment. We found the two real solutions. The other two are imaginary. Am I going to be able to factor this into something friendly and get imaginary roots from it? No. What do we have to do to solve this one? No. Yeah, quadratic formula. So we can't use square root, square root like we did down here because this one just had an x squared we could isolate. This one has x squared and the x. I know. This one I think I'm to use so are we gonna get these Literally, like, no, not on the ACT. So, folks, see if you can write the quadratic formula. See if you can sing the little song to yourself. Hooray. Mm -hmm. oh, is it? Is it 30? It is 30. Literally, Miss it is three. Goodbye. Adios. I was literally correct. I was literally walking Have a wonderful lunch break. I already ate my lunch. Now I'm sad. I don't really get it. Oh, yeah, you're still trying to make weight. <laughs>